Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Happy Wednesday. And welcome to FWP Center. This is our Wednesday night prayer experience where we get together and we beseech the Lord and we pray for ourselves and we pray for one another as well. And we also get recharged. And if this is your first time joining us, welcome. We are watching the chat. And so if you have a praise request, either for yourself or for a friend, a family member, please put it in the chat. We're watching. But also, if you have a praise report, if you'd like to let us know that God has answered a prayer, or even if it wasn't a prayer, but God has done something for you that has really put a smile on your face, please put it in the chat. We'd like to see it. Or just say hello and let us know that you are with us this evening. We have a wonderful program for you. We have Sister Andrea Watson, who will be doing our intercessory prayer. Ivor, uh, Pastor Ivor Richardson, who will be our speaker. And we also have Elder Alvarenga, who will do a scripture reading as well. But before we do that, let us please bow our heads and invite the Lord to join us this evening. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for getting us through this day, getting us, Father, all the way through to Wednesday. Father, we ask that your presence be here with us, that you be with all of our speakers this evening, Father, that you be with all of those who are watching, Father, that you touch their eyes and you touch their ears, Heavenly Father, so that the gift that the Holy Spirit has for us this evening may be heard and be received. We thank you, Lord, in all things. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome back. Again, this is our Wednesday night online prayer experience, and we're so happy to be here with you. I'm your host this evening, Patrice Clark. Uh, as some of you know, I usually host with my husband, Derek, but he's not feeling well. So I do ask as we are putting together our prayer list that you please include him in your prayer that he have a speedy recovery. And I do want to say hello to Sister Sharon, who has given us a hello in our YouTube chat to say happy middle of the week, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So happy middle of the week to you as well. And thank you so much for joining us. Again, as a reminder, we are looking at the chat. And so if you have a prayer request, please put it in there. If you have a praise report, absolutely. We love to hear good news, good things that will encourage someone else as they are waiting for their prayers to be answered. And as we are waiting, I think we can move on. So we do have Sister Andrea Watson, who will do our intercessory prayer. But just before we do that, we will have another song of meditation. But right after that, the very next voice you will hear will be that of Sister Andrea Watson. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer. Good evening to everyone listening. It's another Wednesday night prayer meeting. As I say, it's midweek when we come to the, the, the throne of God where we can recharge, when we can be filled with the Spirit. And so today we come to pray. We come to pray. It's always a blessing when we come to seek the Lord. Whatever we are going through, we can always come to Him because He's a, a present help in time of trouble. And I just want to um, encourage you out there that as we pray together that you will pray with me, that you will lift your hearts heavenward as we come together to petition the throne of grace. Um, if you have any prayer requests, I'll look in the chat quickly for that. But, you know, today we want to pray for our world. We want to pray for our youth. We want to pray for our spiritual leaders. We want to pray for, you know, all the different insecurities that people are experiencing out there, those who need jobs home, who have a hard time finding food, we want to present those before our maker and our king. And so this time I'm going to ask you to join me in this prayer as you reverently lift up your eyes to God. If you can kneel wherever you are, you can do that as we seek the Lord for whatever we stand in need of. And so shall we pray. O most heavenly, eternal Father God, oh, what a privilege that we can come to you, God, in prayer. Father God, you have bid us to come. You, you told us, God, that come every heart that is oppressed, every heart that is burdened, God, that we can come to your throne of grace, that we can find mercy and pardon in our time of difficulty. And so tonight we come, God, we just want to praise you. Just want to praise you for being such a good God to us. Father, you have been our bridge over our troubled water. You have been our dwelling place. You have been our rock. You have been our shelter. You have been everything to us. Father, we don't have enough words to express, God, our gratitude for what you have done, but more so, God, that gift that you have given unto us 2,000 years ago on Calvary Cross, when you sent your son, your dear son, Jesus, to die in our stead. Father, we should have been crucified, but Jesus, your son, took our place. 
And because of that debt, we can have eternal full and free. And so for that, God, we are eternally grateful. And for that, the least we can do, God, is to give you our offering. We can give you, God, our praises. We can give you, God, whatever, God, you ask of us, God, we want to give it to you. Because, Father God, you have been more than wonderful. You have been more than good to us. Father, we thank you for what you have done. You have brought us so far this week, God, midweek, when we can come to your throne of grace, God, to call upon you. Father, we come, God, to call upon you to give you praises and adoration and, God, to bring our requests unto you. Oh, Father, first, God, we just want to thank you, God, for this platform, God, where we can be in our homes, but, Father, we can be touching and agreeing. We can be united, God, in, in, in prayer. And so, Father, God, we pray now, God, that as our heart united to call upon you. Father, we pray now, if we have done anything, God, that would have caused our prayers not to come to you, we ask of you right now, God, to remove from us ourselves. Father, forgive us from all our sins. God, wash us and make us whiter than snow. Wash us thoroughly from within and without. And Father, as we speak, as we pray on, on behalf of ourselves and others, God, that our prayers look up to you, clear God, clear aroma, and Father, you will hear and you will answer our prayers. Father, we thank you, God, for Sister Patrice, God, who has been leading out, has led out in the past and is leading out today. Oh, Father, if you heard her request, her husband, God, who used to be a co-host, is not feeling well at this time. And Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit, God, will anoint him now, dear God, that you will go beside him, God, and Father, God, succor him. Whatever he's standing in need of, God, we know that you are the bomb in Gilead, and she asks for a speedy recovery. Father, we pray, God, that you will give him a speedy recovery, God, that he can lift up holy hands and just thank you, God, for being such a good God. Father, be with her, be with the family. Father, be in their home, God. Father, send your kind of glory, God, to be upon them. Father, breathe upon them, Spirit of the living God, dear Jesus. Oh, we thank you for what you're going to do. Then, Father, we thank you for Elder Alvaranga, God, who has been working so assiduously behind the scenes, God, to get this program running. Oh, Father, tonight, God, we pray that you bless him and his wife, God. Give them a double portion of your blessing, God, as they minister in the field, God, as they lift up your calling as God, they present themselves to be used by you. Father, we pray that you will do that. Father, we pray again for Elder Richardson, God, who will break the word tonight. Oh, God, we pray that you will put a special anointing upon him. Father, give him that clarity of speech that as he speak, God, that his word may go out resounding and every heart that hears God will be convicted and converted and Father may join you and may give their lives to you. Oh, we just want to thank you. Father, we come tonight, God, we come to pray. And Father, we have a list, God, of what we need to ask you for. And so tonight, God, we want to present our youth before you. God, what a time to be a youth. Father God, all the destruction, God, all the allurement, all the things that seem so more attractive than you. Father, we pray tonight, God, that you'll be in the hearts of our youth, God, that you will help them, God, to look to you. Help them to look to the heaven, God, from which all they have come to the hills, from where all they have come. Father, help them, God, when sin and ties them, may they consent not. Father, may they live a godly life and soberly life wherever they go, God, make Others can see that they are different, God, that they are children of the King. Father, we beg of you, God, to prosper them, God. Those who are in college, God, we beg of you, God, to be with them. Protect them, God, from all the dangers seen and unseen. Father, cover them with your blood, Jesus, and allow them, God, that they may be leaders and not followers, God, the head and not the tail. Father, may they live a life, God, that comes and pleasing to you. Oh, we just want to thank you. Oh, Father, we pray now, God, for our sick and our shuddings. Father, those who walk in the vineyard, God, who are stalwart for you, stalwart for you. But Father God, no, God, I've been feeble and frail. And so, Father God, we beg of you, Jesus, to be by your side. Cover them with your blood, Jesus. Stand in the gap for them, God. Those who are experiencing difficulties, God, aches and pain, God, and immobility, God, I beg of you, Jesus, this morning, God, to breathe upon your people. Oh, Father God, stretch out your hands, God, your healing hands. And God, touch them, those, God, who, who need a touch from you, an extra special anointing from you tonight, God, we beg of you to do for them. Oh, God, we just want to thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Oh, Father, we pray, God, for the little, little, little ones, God, the little ones that are in elementary school, God, we pray for a special blessing upon them also. Father, we pray for every demography of our church. Oh, God, we pray now, God, for our leaders, spiritual leaders of our church. We pray in a, in a particular way for uh, Pastor G, Pastor Aguirre. Father, we pray, God, that you will Bless him and keep him, God, that you will shine your face upon him, God, that you will overshadow him, that God, you will touch him, give him a special anointing at this time, God, week after week, God, to present your word, your word of grace, God, to your people. Oh, Father, God, I pray that you will set him apart, God, for the anointing, God, as you did, God, you anoint uh, David, oh, God, we pray that you will do that for him. Oh, God, touch him, God, when he speaks, God, 
His word may go clear, God, and others may take note, and people may come to you, God, through his sermons. Oh, God, we just want to thank you. Father, we pray for the world that we live in, God, the world of wilderness and woe. Oh, Father, so many insecurities. Father, those who are lacking food, Father, we pray that you'll provide. Father, be their bread and butter. For those who need jobs, God, we pray that you'll provide, God. For those who, God, are having a hard time finding a place to live, Father, we pray that you'll provide. For all the insecurities, God, we pray that you will provide, God, for your people, dear Jesus. Lift up a broken heart, God. For those who are experiencing all kinds of different situations in this world, God, of mental health issues, God, depression, and all the things that are on the rise, God, we beg of you, Holy Spirit, dear Jesus, to anoint your people. Oh, God, shine the glory. Oh, God, bomb in Gilead, great physician. Father, heal, God, those who need to be healed. Oh, Father, we pray, God, again, for that prior marathon list. God, of those young children, God, who are suffering from cancer, childhood disease, God, Father, baby Maya. Oh, Father, God, Uriah, dear God, and all the others, Ethan and Emily, and all those others suffering, God. Father, God, as your parents come week after week, God, in faith, God, knowing Jesus, that you can do all things. Father, we pray, God, that you will, uh, Father, let your faith become firm in you, God. Father, show them, God, show up yourself and show off that they can see, God, that you are God who cares. And so, Father, we beg of you, God, to heal the brokenhearted, heal our sickness, God, heal our diseases. Oh, Father, we pray now, God, that you'll be the leaders of this world, God. Father, you see the problem that are happening in, in different parts of the world. Those are happening in Hamas region, God, and, and Palestine, God. The war, dear God, and the casualty, God, the children, God, who have become victim of that war. Father, we pray, God, you stretch out your mighty arms, and God, cease, God, that, 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 that war, God, may there be a ceasefire. Oh, God, may they recognize, God, that these are human beings, God, who have become victim, God, of this situation. And so, Father God, may they come to an amicable diplomatic agreement, God, so that there can be no more uh, loss of lives. Oh, God, please, Father, we pray for those who are in Ukraine, God, and those who are in Russia. Father God, you see the upheaval, God, we beg of you, God, to intervene in the lives of our people. Father, they need you. Father, we pray for place in this world, God, where children, God, are, are suffering, God, of lack of of clean water, God, in Sudan and in Iraq, God, and other parts, God, of the world, God, where people are struggling, dear Jesus. Oh, God, in our little island of Jamaica, we present that to you. And all the islands, God, in the Caribbean, where people are experiencing hardship, oh, God, we beg of you to provide. Oh, God, tonight, we just want to thank you, dear God. Father, we pray for every viewer who comes on tonight. Father, may they receive a special blessing. Oh, God, may you, Jesus, may you, they see you high and lifted up. Father, may they recognize, God, that you are good God. You're a great and awesome God. Oh, Father, we pray now you continue to be with us and bless us. And, Father, we pray that when everything is said and done, that we may be careful to give you the glory, to give you the honor, to give you the praise. Because we ask all of this, God, and all the other unmentioned, God, we forget to ask you in the most mighty, the most precious name of Jesus, we pray. As God's people say, amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Sister Watson, thank you so much. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. And for those of you listening, please, as you say your prayers, please keep all that you have heard this this evening close to your heart and add them to your prayer list. And also, I forgot to mention, please also pray for those who were just recently baptized, right? Mm-hmm. We know that when people give their lives to Christ, that makes the enemy very angry. And so let's just please keep them in our prayers as well. So Sister Watson, thank you so much. Okay, so next up, we have um, a scripture reading as well as our speaker this evening, which is Pastor Ivor Richardson. Uh, We will have a song first, and then right after that, we will have the scripture reading by Elder Alvarenga. So if you would like, while the song is playing, you can get your Bibles ready. He will be reading from Matthew 6, I believe, so you can get that ready. And then... So the very next voice you will hear right after the song will be Elder Alvarenga for the scripture reading, followed by Pastor Richardson. Oh, thank you, Lord. You're still good and your mercy is everlasting. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head 
Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you've been close like no other. I have known you as my father. I've known you as a friend And I have lived In the goodness of God Hey! Cause all my life you have been faithful Oh yes you have And all my life you have been so, so Of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid out I surrender it now I give you help And all my life you have been faithful Oh yes All my life you have been so, so good And every breath that I am able Oh I will sing of the goodness of God yeah. I'm God over and over all my life you have been faithful oh thank you lord every day of my life you have been so so Wow, all my life I've been faithful. The task is mine to take you through the scripture reading for this few moments. It's taken from Matthew chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 5 to verse 15. The book is Matthew chapter, chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 5 to verse 15. I want to invite you to follow along with me as I read. If it's really possible, look at the words. Don't just engage your ears, engage your eyes. And if you can also read it with me, 
engage your lips. That way you will retain what you are viewing. The Bible says this, reading from the New King James Version. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who sees in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father Forgive your trespasses. These are just a few words from the word of God. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Elder Avaranger. You know that I thank God for your ability to read the scripture with power, imagination, energy, and passion. And I needed to hear that because I'm having one of those nights where I suddenly realize I need an early bedtime. So I'm going to ask God to take away the drowsiness of, from my eyes, infuse me with some energy like yourself, and put me on the path where I can speak a word for the Lord. I want to thank our lovely host, Sister Patrice, and we do miss your co-host, Brother Derek. We're going to pray for him continually this week that the Lord will raise him up from whatever it is that's ailing him. And I want to thank you for being here and doing the hosting as always want to thank our lovely praise team, FWP praise team that all sing so ably. I want to thank God for the sister who I do not know, but uh, she did the uh, meditation hymn, uh, Sister Josiah. And I just thank God for the beautiful way she's able to sing. I also want to thank Sister Andrea Watson, great prayer warrior of the church and great sister of the church. Uh, for giving us our intercessory prayer. Thank you for praying for me and thank you for praying for all the concerns of the church, our community, our world, our youth, and all the things that you covered. I'm delighted to be with you tonight. The topic, sermon topic that I've chosen, or I should say God has led me to choose for tonight is entitled, Forgiveness is a Two-Way Street. Forgiveness is a Two-Way Street. Let us pray. God, we pause this brief sermonic prayer, asking that you humble our spirits, quiet our mind, take away our worry, help us to be able to focus on your word for just a little while, oh God. Lord, I pray that you will not only cut my tongue loose, I may be able to speak a word, but give me some energy that I won't be slothful or sluggish or sleepy. I pray that you bless everyone who is on this chat tonight, for those who will be watching in the future. And for all of us involved tonight, Lord, that you may bless us, anoint us, open up our understanding, that we may be able to understand what your word is saying to us. Now I pray the words of my mouth and the collective meditation of your people's hearts may be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, of strength and redeemer. Amen. And so my topic is love. Not love, I'm sorry. Forgiveness is a two-way street. 
But I did borrow this notion from the idea that love is a two-way street, meaning that if you have a relationship with someone, you have to reciprocate what they do. If they hug you, you've got to hug them back. If they kiss you, you've got to kiss them back. If they show you kindness, you have to show them kindness back. Being on a two-way street means that you're going to be responsive and that you're going to be reciprocal to those, to what's happening. And so likewise, forgiveness is a two-way street because it requires us to interact with the person and come to a reconciliation with the person. I want you to turn with me to Psalms 32, and we're going to look at verse 1 and 5. Psalms 32, verse 1 and 5. In Psalms 32, verse 1, the psalmist David says, Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven. And 5 tells us that, Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and you did not hide, I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you gave and you forgave the guilt of my sin. And what that tells me right away that established by the psalmist David, who God said was a man after his own heart, is that we serve a forgiving God. And so God knows how to forgive us. And that's why if we don't forgive others, we judge harshly by God, because God requires that just as he's forgiven us, we too must forgive others. Let's look at Deuteronomy. I'm sorry, let's look at Numbers, chapter 14. And I just want to look at a few verses from Numbers, chapter 14. Starting in wrong, verse 17. And it says, And know therefore, let the power of the Lord be great in the way that you promised when you spoke. The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, forgiving iniquity and transgressions, but by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the parents upon children to the third and fourth generation. Forgive the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of your steadfast love, just as you pardon this people from Egypt even until now. Then the Lord said, I do forgive just as you have asked. Nevertheless, as I live and as all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, none of the people who have seeing my glory and signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and yet tested me these 10 times and have obeyed my voice shall see the land I swore to give to the ancestors. None of those uh, who despise me shall see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me wholeheartedly, I will bring into the land to which he went, and his descendants shall possess it. And so God is showing that when you serve him, when you're faithful to him, like Caleb, who he says had a different spirit, had a spirit to follow the Lord, and God forgave him of any iniquity, forgave him any sin, and allowed him to be the one who would possess the land and yield a new generation because his ancestors died out. Let's go. Let's turn to Acts. Turn to Acts with me. Acts chapter 2. Starting around verse 37. But ready yet? Let's look at 38. And so Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 tells us the following. He's talking about new converts. It says, Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus, so that your sins may be forgiven and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And verse 39 tells us, for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. 
So who, so those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day there were about 3,000 persons who were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayers. And so when we serve God, when we pray, we're praying to God who knows how to forgive. And so because God knows how to forgive, he requires that when he forgives us, we also in turn must forgive ourselves because we live in a world where a lot of people don't forgive themselves from transgressions, but we have to forgive others who have wronged us. And sometimes even if it's who have wronged us, when we find ourselves in a situation, we need to ask their forgiveness, even though we may be in the right and uh, extend God's forgiveness to them. Let's look at Matthew. I know we read Matthew chapter 6, but let's look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 5, we'll just look at two verses. We look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. And Ma the Apostle Matthew is reminding us of something when we're full of anger. He says, when you're full of anger, we've got to get rid of that anger because that anger interferes with our ability to even ask God for forgiveness. And, and, and so he says, "You, but I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. That's God's judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you'll be liable to hell fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go and be, be first be reconciled to your brother or sister. Then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're on the way to court with him. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you'll never get out until you've paid every penny. And so Matthew's given us a prescription of how to do forgiveness. Now, our notion of forgiveness is maybe to even call the person on the phone and say, listen, I, I'm sorry, I want you to forgive me, I forgive you, and let's bury it and move on. Some other people say, I forgive you, but I won't forget. But that's wrong too. Re re uh, forgiveness requires that not only you forgive the person, but you forget it. You put it away. You put it out your mind. You put out your existence. You pray and ask God to help you forget that that's ever happened. Because if you tell the person you're holding against them, still, that's not forgiveness. God wants you to forgive everyone with a clear conscience, with a good heart, with good intentions and integrity. And so Matthew tells us, look, you can't really offer an offering at the altar to God or into a collection plate or wherever you're placing this offering. He's saying if you have something against a brother or sister, or that brother or sister has something against you, you need to leave the gift and go right now. Find that brother or sister and be reconciled, which means ask for forgiveness and also forgive them. When we're in Christ, sometimes we're called to forgive others when we're not even in the wrong. And so forgiveness is very hard for all of us, but God requires forgiveness. If we had more forgiveness right in the congregation, my brothers and sisters, the church would be on fire for the Lord. Too many of us hold grudges. Too much of us hold some malice. Too much of us don't know how to speak to other people. Too much of us have a haughty spirit and speak to people with a haughty spirit, not realizing that that's turning the person off. Paul says, let your speech be so seasoned with salt that you will know how to speak to everyone. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6, which was our main 
focus read so ably by Elder Avaranger. I want to look at verse 7, which says, When you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need and before you ask him. And, and so prayer needs to be humble. Prayer needs to be simple. Prayer needs to be in a prayer closet. When you close the door, not even your family members can hear you. When you beseech the Lord, you ask the Lord to forgive you. Because you have to first be forgiven so God can cleanse you from the iniquity in your heart, from the sin in your heart, from the spirit of unforgiveness, so that when God does that for you, you're ready to offer that forgiveness that God has so freely offered you. Because make no mistake about it, we serve a God who knows how to forgive us and how to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's look at verse 14. These are two serious verses. I want you to pay attention to verse 14 and 15. It says, For, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And see, forgiveness is the street where your heavenly Father is walking on. And as you pass him, he has to see and examine you that you have forgiven others, that you have the spirit of forgiveness in your heart. Because he has a spirit of forgiveness in his heart for you and will freely give you if you ask him. And, and so there's a caution. because I, I, And I know this is not going to go over well in the church that believes strongly in God's love and God's forgiveness. A church that rather emphasize love and care and God's grace and truth. But the portion of the script, and this is one of them, where God shows a little bit of retribution or even a little bit of anger when you don't do the right thing. Verse 50 says, But if you do not forgive others their trespasses or their sins, he says, Neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Now, this is a serious word. This is a bitter word, I know. And I know this word is not going to sit well with a lot of people, but it's not my word. It's the word that God inspired the apostle Matthew to write in his letter. And, and, and so God, God is serious. He will forgive you. But if you're going to be unforgiving, God is not going to forgive you. You can't afford to find yourself in this condition, my Christian brothers and sisters. You must Forgive others, because God says, I'm going to hold you, your unforgiving spirit, against you, and I won't forgive you. That's not a word we want to hear from God. That's not a condition we want to find ourselves in. And I know forgiveness is hard for everyone, because it's hard for me too. But we're required to forgive our brothers and sisters. We have to forgive our spouses. We have to forgive our children. We have to forgive our relatives. We have to forgive strangers. Some of us are so uncomfortable talking to a stranger, we don't want to do it. We stick to our friends in the congregation after worship, but God says we're supposed to entertain the stranger and preach the word to them and show them the spirit of forgiveness so God can forgive us. But you're not really forgiving so God can forgive you. You're forgiving because God says it's the right thing to do. And as we forgive those around us and those who come to contact with, God says, I will forgive you also. Because with forgiveness, remember that you're on a two-way street. And when you're on a two-way street, that means you're in a relationship where you have to reciprocate the action. So if you're on a two-way street with Christ, who's forgiving you, you got to forgive yourself and others. If you're on the two-way street with someone you love, you got to love them back. And the same is true of forgiveness. And as we close out this month of forgiveness, I want you to remember that forgiveness is a serious thing. And God says, you don't do it, you hold it against you. You don't want that to happen. Let's look at Psalms 103. And verse 12, there's something I wanted to drive home. Psalms 103 and verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far he, and this is Jesus Christ, 
removes our transgressions or sins from us. And so, see, God knows how to do forgiveness. God is saying, when I forgive you and move your sins so far, they can't find you again. This forgiveness is done. It's over. Let's look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 12 says, For I will be merciful towards their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. So see, when God forgives you, he doesn't remember your sin anymore. Then let's look at the prophet Isaiah. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43 and verse 25. I am he who blots out your transgressions for my sake, and I will not remember your sins. And so I want you to see that God will blot out your transgressions when the time is right. The time is right when God is ready to do it, when he sees the sanctity of your heart, when he sees that you have a motive and attitude of wanting to forgive yourselves, of wanting to forgive others, that God will forgive you also. And he says, look, I have the ability to blot out your sins. It's not a wonderful God, but a wonderful built-in promise that we serve a God who can what? Blot out our sins, which means that he deletes them from the record and forgives them. If you remember nothing else tonight, I want you to remember that we serve a God who stands ready to not only forgive you, but to set you on the path of righteousness, to set you on the path of forgiveness, to set you on the path where you are now ready to encourage and bless and forgive others their transgressions. And so remember that forgiveness is a two-way street. Remember that forgiveness requires that you reciprocate, meaning if someone is forgiving you, you need to forgive them. And if, if you forgive someone and they don't want to forgive you, there's not much you can do about that, but you let them know that I've forgiven you because Christ has forgiven me and I'm offering that to you. And sometimes we have to tell those who ask forgiveness, even if we think that we're right, that we forgive them their trespasses because we love them because Christ has first loved us and Christ has required or asked us to ask you for forgiveness and I want you to forgive me. How we approach someone makes a difference. How we speak to someone makes the difference. And, and so we're going to use Paul's advice to remember that we must season our speech with sort so that we can speak to everyone in a way that's encouraging. We can speak to everyone that shows the compassion and love of Christ, because Christ has loved us and inspired us in our heart. God has certainly given us that agape love that allows us to love others. When God gives his agape love to you, you have so much love that you can love those we call the unlovable. And because you can do that, we certainly can extend God's forgiveness through his agape love. And so I want you to remember that we need to ask for forgiveness daily. The scripture reminds us of something. It says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath or anger. Always repent each day, each night, so that God may forgive you. And so anger is a dangerous thing. As we read in Matthew chapter 5, that section was entitled uh, Concerning Anger. 
where God says, leave your gift and go reconcile with the person you've offended. And so it says, don't let the rod, go, don't let the sun, I'm sorry, go down on your wrath. Resolve that each night. And the same thing, forgiveness. Don't go to sleep with unforgiveness on your heart and unforgiveness to those who you may have got into a little brush with or a little dis, uh, disagreement with. You need to solve that every day. When we go to bed each night, we have to have a clear conscience. We have to have the sense of forgiveness. And I mean true forgiveness. Forgiveness where you forgive and you forget. Because just as God says, I'll blot out your sin and remove your sins as far as the east is from the west, that's how we have to forgive those we come into contact with, those who may be members of our family. Too many family members sometimes hold animosity against other family members. And if you can't forgive the people in your family, it's going to be impossible for you to forgive strangers and those outside your family. So practice forgiveness at home. Just as charity and love begins at home, the Bible tells forgiveness begins at home. Ask God to give you a strong spirit of forgiveness and of his agape love, a strong sense, a portion of his mercy, his great, his grace, his truth. And that will allow us to always possess a spirit, a strong spirit of forgiveness. As we forgive others, God says in Matthew chapter 6, I will forgive you also. But if you don't forgive others, neither will I. Don't find yourself in that predicament. Always forgive others. Forgive yourselves too, because sometimes we hold this against ourselves and make ourselves spiritually and mentally crippled. But also ask God to develop a strong sense of love, a strong sense of forgiveness, a strong sense of caring, a strong sense of compassion for those who come around us and we'll be able to forgive all those we need to forgive and to encourage others to be forgiving. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Pastor Richardson, thank you so much. What a blessing this month has been as we have been investigating what the Lord tells us about forgiveness, right? And there, there were two things I think that has really stood out to me and it was Forgiving others, right? Which we know that it's so important to forgive others. But the other part of it was forgiving yourself. And in the very same way that we hold grudges against others, you know, we don't even realize why we're walking around and we're so heavy and we can't even move forward in our lives, but we're holding grudges against ourselves, right? We, we don't, God has forgiven us. We have come to him earnestly and we have asked of the Lord to forgive us for our sins and we can't forgive ourselves. We can't even look at ourselves in the mirror. And as long as we are looking back at our sins and as long as we are looking back at the sins of others and their transgressions and living in that anger, we can never move forward. And so I do hope that all of you have really gotten something out of the messages that we've had this month in forgiveness. And if there was someone in your life that you need to forgive, please reach out to them. Please pray on that, that the Holy Spirit can strengthen you. And if maybe you're the one that needs to be forgiven, right? Maybe it's time for you to reach out to someone else and say, I'm sorry. So please pray on that because it takes strength to do those things. And also pray for strength for you to forgive yourself that you may look in the mirror and look with a smile and you can let go of that heaviness that's on your heart. And so I just wanted to thank everyone who has joined us this evening. Thank you so much to Elder Avarenga in the background and did our scripture reading to Sister Watson for our intercessory prayer, um, our praise team, and of course, Pastor Richardson. And to those of you who have joined us online and have written in the chat, thank you so much for joining us as well. Um, Sister Reed, Sister Mohan, Elder Murray, Sister Marlene and Elder Webb and also Sister Sharon. Thank you all so much for joining us. And again, just as a reminder, we are FWP Center, but we also have an actual church where you can come and visit us if you are not familiar or haven't done so in a while at 180 Juniper Hill Road. And we have 9.30 a.m., Sabbath morning, uh, as well as 10 a.m. We have online Sabbath school and 11 a.m. We have divine worship. So please do come and join us. Thank you again. 
Happy Wednesday. I hope that you feel recharged for the rest of the week until Sabbath comes. I know I do. So thank you again so much. Have a wonderful, blessed evening. Good night. Thank you.